Auburn? No, it's at MHG in Saco, so luckily it's close home. Wait for me. So nice. And where is oh, it? Just not wait for you. It's in Saco, right near like the Industrial Park Road. It's pretty close oh, to the like, Oh, okay. used to be. Is that the strip complex where they have the indoor? Yeah, the breezy, like the indoor little turf field there. Yeah. Did you print that? Oh, yeah. Not no, come back to the leaves. Get Ben to leave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was. Yeah. Thanks. Who's gonna send you that? Your phone number. Oh. It wouldn't be weird for me until like I'm home. I'd be like, what do you do with those readers anyway? Smuggling for what? We're saving money. We're saving money. You want my jacket? No, I have my winter coat, but that would look kind of crazy. I might put it on. I'm not afraid of looking crazy. Clearly. Hey, look, hey, look if it's a distinction. You tell me when you're I might put it on my lap like a blanket. I did that. I was, I was in a meeting with people, senior citizens. And I was the coldest one in the room. I had my coat on me like a blanket. And then I'm like, wait, that's a good idea. So then we were all huddled up. Yeah, <laughs> don't expect it. The agenda buried. Good evening. This is a meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. It's February 5th, 2015. Can I have attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Lang? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? Here. And Ms. Hartle? Here. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? <clears throat> there are none. Does anyone from the community wish to speak on any agenda item at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Okay. Um, as you know, the uh, district requested uh, to the Department of Education uh, for an extended timeline for meeting the DOE's requirements as it relates to proficiency-based uh, diplomas. And that uh, request for an extension was approved late in December. As part of the extension provisions, the DOE will make visits to the districts to ascertain each district's progress on the plan that they submitted. Well, we uh, received um, notice that we will have DOE visitors uh, for that purpose on February 25th um, here uh, in Scarborough. The DOE will spend approximately three hours and engage in discussions with our district leadership team, which is basically a select group of the leadership council members, the high school leadership team, which is David and his key team, and with uh, high school teachers that would be representing, um, uh, that would be representatives across all of the content areas. So we'll be looking forward to learning more about the DOE's expectations um, and particularly um, what their resource sources are that are available to us to help us in meeting those expectations and I'll be reporting back out to the board after our meeting and uh, once we receive some feedback from our visitors. Uh, the leadership team, uh, both collectively and in our project teams, continue to make progress in a number of areas that seem to be, um, I think, we're all feeling, consuming a pretty hefty amount of our energy and time. That's good because we have a lot of energy. Not a lot of time, but we do have a lot of energy. And they include uh, the development of the 2015-16 uh, school budget, um, supporting the work of the 60 or so PLT the professional learning teams and supporting each of those PLT facilitators um, which populate each of those 60 or so teams. Um, all of those uh, professional learning teams are deep at this time of the year into their action research and they're moving towards answering um, their respective inquiry questions. 
also includes uh, custom designing our district-wide art, um, the art and science of teaching seminars. Um, schools have already, across all of our schools, uh, for the staff, they've already conducted four of the six scheduled seminars, and the design team has completed the development of seminar five. So we're, the design team is actually just one step ahead of the presentations that are happening in each of the schools, and they seem to be, we're getting pretty positive um, uh, feedback from our staff. And the purpose there was to use Marzano's Art and Science of Teaching um, as a sort of a, a, a fundamental building block in terms of our um, uh, performance evaluation and professional go growth um, model that we're moving to, which is also, as you all know, based on Marzano's work. Um, also includes advancing the development work on our performance evaluation and, prof and professional growth model. And um, to, uh, in that vein, it has included significant professional development for all of the leadership uh, council members, um, basically district leaders, <coughs> school leaders, and teacher leaders, um, so that we're deepening our knowledge and skills in Marzano's system and uh, getting some experience and some training in using the eye observation um, uh, format. Um, continues uh, to include work uh, which is uh, completing the district's proposal and plan for building the technology capacity uh, that's needed to help all of our students be prepared successfully for uh, preparation uh, f for uh, uh, college and career and um, also includes preparation for testing uh, that's coming up uh, with teacher prep um, and scheduling being uh, some time-consuming issues. And lastly, uh, preparing for some key springtime events, the largest of which will be the community dialogue that will be happening. It's the third, Scarborough's third community dialogue, and that will be happening um, and scheduled for April 30th. And just a final uh, uh, piece of my report, if you take notice of the article that I shared with you, um, I thought it was in your packet, but I guess it's here on the, on the desktop, and uh, it is, it, the, uh, it's entitled Top 5 Education Trends for 2015, and you'll see, uh, it's a very quick little article, but you'll see that it does place great emphasis on keeping pace with the rapidly advancing changes and developments in technology. In fact, four of the five trends included, including blended learning, mobile learning, wearable technology, and personalized learning are all uh, technology dependent. So just interesting to see there's, there's, there's so much in the literature in terms of the, the changes that are happening and the advancements that are happening uh, related to education technology. Expected to be, I think, a $19 billion business uh, within the next few years. It's a huge, huge, huge trip. So that's my report. Okay, thank you. The chair's report, which is mine. I just have one item for you. I did attend the Southern Maine Partnership meeting on January 21st, and that topic was proficiency-based diplomas. There were speakers from, um, well, one was from an organization called The Great Schools, and the others were from actual high schools who are already working on how to develop a plan for proficiency-based diplomas. And they were from Freeport, Noble High School, and one from New Hampshire. And I'll just say we had two teachers, two of our teachers did attend that session, Justin Stebbins and Crystal Ash Cuthbert, Cuthbert. And so it was nice to see them there. Um, I'm just gonna give you a couple of takeaways that I had from that session. One is that teachers need time. Noble High School decided to have um, release time every single week in order for the teachers to accomplish the work. They had late starts once a week. Um, another takeaway is that there was a suggestion that we begin to have conversations that make it okay to say that high school could be either three years four years or five years long, and that that will be fine. Um, and the last one is just that um, one of the schools was talking about 
being involved with NEASC, which is New England Association of Schools and Colleges that give the accreditation, which is what our high school will be participating in, and to kind of blend the work of proficiency-based diplomas along with the state standards and the NEASC work so that it works all together. So give them the time to do it and then allow them to bring those pieces together to do this huge piece of work. And that's what I have for you. For the committee reports, you want to start, Mr. Chiasso? Sure. Um, it's been a busy couple weeks for finance. Um, we just had our meeting uh, before this one, our regular school board finance committee meeting. Uh, the topics we discussed were um, we finalized our draft goals for 2014-15. Um, those will be posted up on the website, I think, on Kate's business page. <coughs> Uh, if you guys, if anybody needs hard copies, I certainly can provide them. But uh, everything that we talk about should be posted up on the website. So um, feel free to look there. But if there are any questions or hard copies needed, let me know for any of the stuff. Uh, we talked about the um, follow-up from the joint school board um, town council finance committees. We met, I believe it was last week. Um, we finalized our norms, which will also be uh, up on the website. Um, basically kind of like rules of engagement, if you will, or ways that we want to conduct business together. It was very positive um, and, and a very good exercise, I think. So we haven't really started into the meat of things, but that's going to come at the next meeting that's tentatively scheduled for February 23rd at 3.30 p.m. Uh, it's not official yet, but hopefully that will, that will be coming in the mailboxes pretty soon. Um, obviously, Finance Committee will be there. Anybody's welcome to attend if you want to come and just and, and sit and listen. That's fine. Um, the uh, agenda topic, some of the things that we talked about that we'll be discussing in the joint committee are, are going to be some, um, some trending information on, on budgets for some, for some cost drivers. We'll be looking at um, some of the, um, where we're, an update, if you will, for the IT. Um, it's not, nothing's firm yet, but at least an, a status update of where we are in that process. And we'll also be doing possibly some planning for the joint um, meeting that we're going to have for the town hall setting. So there's some finance, some structures in place that we're going to have to start talking about, and we're going to have to figure out the best way to do that. And there's a subcommittee that was that's been formed from the joint committee. Um, myself, uh, Councillor Donovan, will work with Dr. Entwistle and and Tom Hall to get a general framework in place, and then we'll bring it before the committee for for final approval of how we want that executed. So we'll we'll, we'll have some thought behind that and have a have a process in place for that. Um, new business that we took up in the Finance Committee, the um, 2014 audit is completed for the school side of things. Um, there's still some things that are, that are being delayed on the town side of things, but our audit's been completed and we're just waiting for the report out. Um, we also looked, uh, there was a brief update about the Leadership Council and some of the work that they're doing with, with setting their... Um, their mission critical work on budget issues and, and starting to prioritize their needs on the list, similar to what we saw uh, a few weeks ago, I believe, with the update from the leadership team. And uh, finally, we went through the um, FY15 second quarter financials. Um, no real surprises there. There were a couple of outliers. Um, I think off the top of my head, they were, uh, let's see. There was uh, charter school tuition was up, and commission charter commission fees were up um, a little bit more than expected. But we we saw that coming a little bit based on the, um, <coughs> the enrollment numbers that we saw from the beginning of the year. So those will also be posted on the website. Um, you guys can take a look at those. If there are any specific questions, let me know, uh, and we can we can get the details. But um, uh, other than that, um, we are gearing up for the 23rd. And uh, hopefully we'll have some, some good progress to report. Thank you. Mrs. Shea? Uh, like the Finance Committee, we on the Communications Committee are gearing up for the budget cycle and are hoping to sort of get out in front of um, those talks and come up with a list of important information that we, th that we sort of learned from last year that... Um, the citizens are, are interested in hearing about and want to know about, and we want to get that information out um, ahead of 
of any misinformation that may come out. So we've sort of started to come up with a list. I'll be in touch with Kate to get some information from her so we can create um, one pagers, basic, simple information that we can post on our website, also post on Facebook, and just get as much correct information out um, as we can leading up to the budget vote. Also, the community dialogue, I believe, um, is posted on our website April 30th, April 30th from 4.30 to 7.30 at Wentworth, <laughs> in case you aren't checking our website every day or every week. Um, that's one that, that people should be attending. Very good. Okay. The policy committee met today. We are snowed out of our last meeting. So um, today we reviewed a bunch of other policies that will come up in, I guess it will be in two weeks at our next meeting for the full board to review. Um, some were just to review and some um, we did make some changes and including we are um, proposing an addition of a security camera policy which we don't have currently, and it's not required or recommended, but a good idea, according to Drummond and Woodson, to have a policy. So that will also be becoming um, before the board, and then we have the three business items tonight. So Very good. Ms. Perry? Thank you. I have several items. First of all, uh, the Maine School Boards Association Executive Committee uh, met a couple of weeks ago on a Saturday. And one of the items was uh, Harry Pringle, who is now retired from Drummond Woodsum, did a, did a board workshop on, well, he gave a great history for those per new persons on the board who were not aware of the history, and then uh, talked about similar things that he has talked about with our board on how to work together. And it was really a, a, an enlightening time. We've had two uh, conference call meetings on upcoming legislation, and there's nothing catastrophic going on at the present time, very early in the, in the process. Uh, I want to remind everybody that Operation Cupid is Tuesday evening, the 10th, at, at the middle school cafeteria, 6 o'clock. Everybody is welcome to come in and and help to uh, put the Valentines together and uh, reminding you that they're going to the veterans home, uh, they're going to uh, the Hewitt Center in, for veterans in uh, Saco, and all of our first responders, both active uh, and retired in the town of Scarborough. So we're very excited. I think we have well over 300 people whom we're going to uh, do Valentine's for. Then on the 14th, which is Saturday, uh, Valentine's Day actually, is going to be Project Grace's fuel drive mm -hmm. for the town. And I'm sure there'll be more publicity, but I had an email on it because I will be involved with that. And then again, on the 10th, and maybe Kelly can speak to this more than I can. There are 84 children who will be taking food home via the backpack program, and uh, they will be accepting donations at the Wentworth School for the backpack program uh, through the 10th. And I believe that's, oh, negotiations. Uh, we are currently in negotiations with the administrative team and we refer them to the, as the administrative team. The superintendent calls them the leadership team, but the contract said, says the Scarborough Administrators Association, so that's how we refer to them. And we are also uh, starting to, to uh, negotiate a new contract with the custodians and cafeteria workers. That's it. Thank you. I can just follow up a little bit about the backpacks. I was in there today dropping off some food, and the shelves are a little bare, to be honest with you. Um, in December, they had had um, a generous donation, so the um, food service workers were able to go and purchase food to distribute in December. So I kind of gave my people December off, but um, I'm collecting again, and I'm happy to pick up if anyone wants to contact me. I will happily deliver it for you on Tuesday, actually Monday. 
um, I think Tuesday is the day that they are um, assembling the boxes. There's 84 kids and it comes out to about 30 something families. Um, and it, the food that was there today is not enough. So I have a, <coughs> another neighborhood that I'm collecting from on Saturday, so hopefully that will fluff it out a little bit. But if anybody was thinking of donating ever to the backpack program, this would be a good time. Mm -hmm. So happily, um, you can contact me and I'll pick it up or make arrangements for you to drop it off. Thanks. Uh, Kelly, and they gratefully accept monetary yes, donations. The Kiwanis actually donated $100 this time, which is very, no, very 150 150 Oh. Is there a list of, of preferred yes. uh, products and things like that? Um, not macaroni and cheese. I've been asked to say that over and over. There is a food packing event where um, macaroni and cheese was the thing that people were packing. And so I personally have dropped off 15 cases of macaroni and cheese. So they do not need macaroni and cheese. Yeah. But any other non-perishable, nutritious food that is quasi-kid friendly, breakfast foods, um, things that are easy to open, um, single serve is best but not always necessary because like I said it's 84 kids but only 30 something families so um, cereal oatmeal pancake mix tuna hamburger helper that kind of stuff um, I happen to know somebody's doing extreme couponing donating the her her winnings from that for um, extreme couponing. yes um, someone has a new hobby, <laughs> and she's <laughs> donating all of her good deals to the backpack program. Oh. So there's a whole bunch of ways to make this really fun. Um, but yes, any help is, is welcome, and thank you. Kelly, I assume that's because vacation is coming up, and it's, yes. that's when the backpacks are going home. Right. Um, it's easier for them to sort in advance instead of the scramble right on the last day before everyone's leaving for vacation. So they do it a couple days in advance. Okay. Anyone else? Mrs. Lang? <clears throat> the teacher evaluation committee con continues to work on the performance evaluation and the professional growth model for the teachers. And the document has had input from all stakeholders and being refined. And our school leaders and the educator development team and the instructional coaches have had two of three trainings as um, planned for the eye observation component of it. So. The first training was about the protocol of how to use the system. The second, you know, you actually use the system including how to score, the scoring. And the last training is going to be about the feedback. So it's going to be in March. And the school year, you know, we have 24 teachers as, you know, probably called the guinea pigs, <laughs> um, being the pilot program. And the school leaders are, you know, observing them with the eye observation system. So. And there's the next meeting, February 26th, in the town hall chamber B, and we are going to review the document with the, um, all our stakeholders, see how it comes out. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Student reports. Kristen? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. Sebago, Sebago oh, Education right. Alliance met, um, the superintendents met on uh, January 12th which was just after our last meeting, and um, it was held at Hassan University, which was quite interesting. We received a tour of the Hassan University, which is right off of Route 22 and Spring Street in, mm -hmm. it's Westbrook, they consider it, so it's past the Target <laughs> store. So, um, interestingly enough, I found out that um, they offer courses for students a three credit hour college class available to any junior or senior um, was a hundred dollars for the three credit hours so if you have juniors or seniors um, you can take up to two classes per semester which would mean that you could take up to six in a year because they allow you to take summer classes as well but you could feasibly leave you know, high school with quite a few credits there if you took the six classes a year. Um, also, they offer um, classes for um, either teachers or other individuals, uh, $804 a course for other people, and that's about $400 less than USM. They have an unbelievable space. Um, during the day, it's generally not used, so they also have it available for groups um, to use, rent out. Um, I know that they had said some of the school meetings they were allowing to be used on a 
during the day, so up until about 3.30 or so. Mm -hmm. So if anybody finds that they have the need, any of our administration, administration or um, teacher groups, you know, that could be a good use of space. Um, at an Alliance School update, um, we just received some information um, discussing some of the issues that had been happening at the Alliance School with some of the students, um, concerns about uh, challenges about the safety and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Things seem to have leveled off. Um, some of the concerns were really at the beginning of the year, so things are going much better now. Um, there was a discussion about accreditation and um, then about proficiency-based um, issues and how would you gauge that at the um, Alliance School. So our next meeting is this coming Monday the 9th and that one's going to be held at the Gorm Superintendent's Office. So I'll have another update next time. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. And now the student reports, Kristen. Um, so both the high school and the middle school are finished with the first semester. Grades have now been all finalized and are looking forward to a successful second semester. Um, and the plethora of recent snow days has caused a little bit of a crunch, especially with AP classes um, and the impeding exams in May, uh, but we're trying to make everything up as quickly as possible. Uh, all the winter sports teams are entering the playoffs in the near future with uh, girls hockey is the first one tomorrow yeah. night, MHG 830. Um, <laughs> the one act play is busy preparing for their show which will open on February 27th which is a Friday and parent teacher conferences are also upcoming along with the National Honor Society is putting on a winter clothing drive um, which is ending in the near future so if anybody has any jackets, mittens, hats that they are willing to donate it, there are plenty of boxes located throughout the high school to give to uh, needy kids and families uh, in the cold winter months. So that is all I have. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Um, all seems to be going smoothly in Wentworth and the primary schools. I have no new updates to share. Okay. Thank you. So, 9.0, do we have a recognition? <clears throat> I have a couple of um, recognition items. First, recognizing two of our middle school students, uh, Jacob Cousine and Jane Greenberg. Uh, they're both eighth, eighth graders and they won honorable mention awards in the Scholastic Art and Writing Competition for the state of Maine and my understanding is this is out of 501 submissions. So we want to congratulate and recognize uh, Jacob and Jane for, um, for their good work and um, that sounds pretty good. Also at the middle school um, we want to recognize uh, one of our uh, teachers, uh, Jacob Brown. Uh, Jacob received a grant from, it's called ABC CLIO Solutions, and I'll tell you what that's about. Um, but Jacob is one of our very talented um, uh, first-year teachers, and, um, and I know some of us have connections to mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Brown, because I've seen your daughters in his class. Um, the ABC CLIO Solutions Innovation Grant supports educators who utilize digital tools to facilitate creative learning experiences that elevate student learning. Program provides access to um, their solutions, comprehensive library of digital content, and invites educators to weave these resources into their daily instruction uh, to reflect on the process and outcomes and to share their findings. Um, and I guess at the end of the grant, uh, the work that's being done by Jacob and the other teachers who received grants um, will all be published um, as a means of supporting the larger education community in expanding its repertoire of innovative practices. Um, Jacob Brown's grant will help the social studies teachers at the middle school continue the work that they have ongoing to develop a rigorous and integrated social studies curriculum. So. Congratulations to Mr. Brown. We haven't we haven't mentioned the uh, the Wentworth presentation that created the mural and the that was we haven't had a real meeting since that point and and mm -hmm. uh, perhaps yeah. Joanne or Donna would like to say something about that because it was fabulous. Are you talking about the Marsh sto stories? Marsh the Marsh stories. I. Okay. okay, I think we did do something like that. I think Kelly came and uh, presented some stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, that was a uh, grant that worked with 
uh, the Historical Society of Scarborough, the Audubon Society, and uh, two classrooms, uh, David Saltman and Maria Twomley, in which the students created uh, murals, but also wrote marsh stories and uh, also did some physical movement with the marsh stories. And then there were two artists in uh, residence that came in and worked with the students. If you have an opportunity to get to the Wentworth School to see the uh, murals, they're absolutely fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulous. And the whole production was uh, exceeded every expectation any of us could have imagined that uh, these students in third, fourth, and fifth grade working with the different agencies and how they produce this. It was just remarkable. It really made Wentworth become a school. Very good. New business. 10.1, the minutes of January 22nd. Move approval is printed. Second. Any discussion? Any corrections? Addition? Deletions? I'm just going to abstain because I wasn't here. Okay. Everyone down there okay? All right. All in favor? Six. Okay. 10.2, the second reading of policy BDE, Board Standing Committees. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Any discussion? I'll just say that um, for BDE, it's about board standing committees, and there were some um, notes made on some of the policies. I think particularly, Chris, you had some, mm -hmm. some um, suggestions for us. And for this and the policies <coughs> to follow, they've all been amended to reflect those. Any other questions on this item? <coughs> Being none? Second reading, correct? Yes. Second reading. All in favor? Of BDE seven. <coughs> Ten point three. Second reading for policy EEAA, which is student transportation services. With approval. Okay. Any discussion? <clears throat> I'll just uh, remind everybody that. Um, this did have substantial changes, you know, not between the first and second reading, um, but that it does um, add some sort of, um, I keep calling it the reasonableness standard, that there is a point at which it is not safe for a bus to go down very narrow streets or to make a turnaround where it's too tight, um, especially some of the newer neighborhoods that are being built in Scarborough right now and with humongous snowbanks. Um, so that is uh, referenced in this policy. It had, how has it been? Do you know this with all this snow? I haven't heard, but it's I imagine it can't um, be good. In December, we yeah. had to uh, change a bus stop from um, because the road was too narrow and the bus could not make a turn, and it was very uh, slippery. So that went into effect, and we haven't heard anything. Uh, so it, it, <coughs> thank you. Are we doing anything with the town planning group at all? Or, as I think some of these are more private roads than they are the public ones, correct? Or is it the private no, ones that public, develop? They're okay. public streets that are, um, what the concern is, the neighborhood uh, in the Eastern Village mm -hmm. and um, Dunstan. Crossing. No, um, what's the new one? The new Dunstan. Um, it was the Great American Neighborhood, but I don't remember what it's called okay. now. Oh, yeah. But anyway, dense housing mm -hmm. right up on the street mm -hmm. right. with um, not a lot of clearance when there are snow banks and especially if parents are parking at bus stops. Um, that was one of the, the primary drivers, no pun intended actually, about um, putting in that clause because mm. there will be some of those streets and um, Sarah Redmond has gone already with not even one of the biggest buses and tried some of the streets and it's very tight. So that's why we needed this yeah. this clause in there. Is there some some solution that can be worked out, whether it's a no parking issue during the morning or something that, okay. or is it know. pretty much just? I think that that's a town issue that we right. can't control. I mean, there's even, you know, if it's trash day, there'll be trash right. cans out. I mean, there's just so many variables yeah. that yeah. that's not in our purview. So all we can do is put the bus stops <laughs> where we feel it's safest for students to congregate. I I went on one of those rides with a bus and 
Oh, we don't. Some of those spots to just yeah, even pull in some of the way they have these streets curved and things yeah. didn't even allow a bus to back up straight, let alone, you know, with a car parked on the side, it was very difficult to even get by. So. And it may be difficult. With no snow. Yeah, I, I mean, November. It's the fact that's kind of after the fact now, it's a done deal. I'm just thinking about moving forward with all the right. development going on. How do we work with the town to ensure that that's part of the planning process to, to make sure that these, we don't have more neighborhoods like this? You know? Well, the standard, and talking to Sarah about it, the standard <coughs> that the town uses, can a fire truck get down the street? Mm -hmm. When a fire truck's coming through, it's got flashing lights and a siren, and if people are in the way, they move over. and. Mm. That doesn't happen for a school bus. Okay. So that's that the standard they use is a fire truck, and we have different needs with a school bus. So okay. I, I think that we don't win on that, but that's why we needed to amend the policy. Mm. Mm. Anything else on this item? Uh, I just say everybody needs to be careful. I have a terrible time getting out of my driveway mm -hmm. because the banking is so high, and I'm just worried about the children mm -hmm. waiting for the school bus. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good point. Thank you, Jackie. All right. On this next item, girls, you are able to vote on this. Okay. So um, on the second reading for EEAA, the Student Transportation Services, all in favor? Seven plus two. Ten point four, the second reading for JEC, school admissions. Move approval motion? as presented. <clears throat> Second? Second. Anyone? Jody? Any discussion? I'll just say this is one that we, um, that came up for review and we just added the um, kindergarten um, 4.0 to add that in this policy. It had been a separate policy before. Good, makes sense. Okay, all in favor? Seven plus two. And now the motion to dismiss the Wentworth Building Committee since their work is done. Do I have a motion? I move that we dismiss the Wentworth Building Committee after a fantastic job in school open and everything's awesome. A second. <laughs> Very good. Any discussion? Very formal. Seeing none. All in favor? I'll miss seven, you guys. Seven plus <laughs> <laughs> we'll, still, we'll still see you, Joanne. Are, are you saying you'd like to create another one? Uh, no, no, <laughs> okay. no, no. That was okay. She just wants to have an alumni group. That's all. <laughs> 10.6. Do I have a motion to approve the July 1st, 2012 to June 30th, 2015 bargaining contract of the Scarborough Custodians and the Scarborough Food Service employees? So move. Second. Any discussion? Jackie? I'd just like to make a couple of statements. That, uh, I'm sure most people are aware that, that we've been in a collecting, we have been bargaining with this group for uh, something like uh, two years intently. We have went to fact finding, we went uh, to arbitration. And uh, basically what this says is that we have accepted the arbitrators, arbitration panel's recommendation that we, uh, that the contract is for this year. It will end July uh, 30th. June 30th. June 30th, excuse me. Uh, during that time, uh, the custodians will remain on the, step that they are currently on and as soon as this is finalized the cafeteria workers will receive a 0.75 increase on their current step but not move a step and we have started negotiations uh, on a subsequent contract now i want to explain to the public there were various numbers thrown out on why we wanted to contract services for custodians and uh, supposedly we could have saved upwards of $250,000 by doing that. Uh, 
we tried to negotiate with our custodians uh, and the arbitration panel did not agree with the board. Uh, their finding we find uh, a little odd that they said that a school district should not be able to contract services just to save money. And the reason we found that uh, to be odd is that we were trying to put more money into the classroom. So here we are. I just want to explain to the community why we are where we are. We probably could have gone to court, but our lawyers uh, advised us that it would have cost would probably cost us more than we could ever possibly save if we went to litigation. So we have settled this contract and we'll continue to no negotiate subsequent contracts. And I ask for your approval for this contract. Any questions? Very good. All in favor of this motion to approve the contract between the custodians and the food services and the school district Seven, thank you. And 10.7, the superintendent's plan for K-2 and Wentworth School leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to direct your attention to the packet that um, each of the board members received. Um, it says uh, leadership uh, reassignments and recommenda um, recommendation appointments. Um, I think particularly um, now, as the board has already been briefed, related to the outcomes of the and the multiple options to be more deeply explored in the context of our long-term facilities planning project. I hope that my presentation tonight, you'll see that this presentation tonight and my recommendations will be seen um, by uh, board members as being integral to ensuring that we build in some needed flexibility to adapt to what might be a number of possible directions that the board may move uh, related to uh, both facilities usage and, um, and uh, basically managing our student population variables. Uh, the long-term facilities options, as you know, include different proposals to either reduce overcrowding at the Scarborough Middle School and or to reduce the current high costs and these are costs that are both energy related and human resource related um, in maintaining the current um, model of three schools in our K-2 um, school organization. Um, I think it's important that the, that the community understand that there'll be much more analysis and discussion that will follow with the long-term facilities planning team, the board, school staff, and the community as we really try to vet those, I think, seven or so different options that have come out of the facility study. In the meantime, however, I've uh, been careful and carefully and thoughtfully reviewing the options for moving forward to stabilize our leadership council and school leadership assignments at both the K-2 schools um, and at our Wentworth school. And that's stabilization beyond the interim plan that is currently in place for 2014-15. My goal is to both maximize flexibility while at the same time minimizing disruption to our ongoing work of improving teaching and learning across the district. So um, I'm just going to give you a little history here. As you know, a very thorough search was conducted last school year in a, a, a very good effort to find a high performing and suitable replacement for Anne Mary Dexter as the principal of the Wentworth School. This nationwide search attracted applicants from outside of New England as well as inside of New England and a number of folks from Maine. Unfortunately, but has been, as has been the case for many of these principal searches, uh, we were not successful. We were not successful in attracting the best fit candidate that we had set out to find. On the flip side, we are very fortunate because the talent within our existing school leadership organization enabled us to put together a plan B, primarily by redeploying existing leaders that we have. So the first draft motion that you have in front of you um, at, that I prepared for you tonight is for the board, um, I'm seeking your approval 
of my recommendation to appoint Kelly Crosby to the Wentworth School Principal position. This will allow us to forego a repeat of engaging in another search process, eliminating the, the time investment, the distraction, and the expense that would be incurred. Now as interim principal with um, what I refer to as a baptism by fire, uh, which is essentially orchestrating the opening of a very large brand new school and with several months of principal level school leadership experience under her belt, Kelly impressively performs her role in a very capable, confident, and highly effective manner. As well, she is, and she has been since joining our leadership council as an assistant principal, a significant and respected contributor to the work of our leadership council. She was, please remember, fully vetted by the Wentworth School community at the time she was appointed to her assistant principal position in 2012. And it is my belief, my sort of unwavering belief, that had, had Kelly chosen to be an applicant last year, she would have been selected and appointed to the Wentworth principal position at that time. So with the board making this appointment tonight, it would be my plan to reassign John Thurlow as assistant principal at the Wentworth School. John has done an outstanding job in his role, and he and Kelly make a strong and complementary leadership, what I call a leadership duo. They have done an incredible, just unbelievable, surpassing all expectations kind of job in terms of um, managing um, all of the details of opening a brand new school and making it a school, which they have su succeeded in doing. So um, with this, I would thus establish the school leadership structure for Wentworth School that will keep the positive <coughs> momentum, and there's a lot of it there, going at the, at the Wentworth. The second draft motion prepared for the board this evening is, and um, uh, you will also find a copy of Kelly's uh, resume um, there. In this, uh, the second draft motion prepared for the board this evening is uh, to seek your approval of um, my uh, recommendation to appoint Ann Cass to a second interim year as K-2 assist assistant principal. She will continue to report to Kelly Mullen Martin and assist her in managing the Pleasant Hill and Blue Point schools. Ann has been an extraordinary resource uh, to the K-2 team um, and to our leadership council and continuing this interim assignment for another year provides us overall with the needed flexibility as we manage through the long-term facilities um, options and that team continues their work in vetting all of the possible solutions to better utilize and more efficiently utilize our current facilities, school facilities. It's my plan then with the board's approval tonight of Ann's um, uh, appointment is uh, to reassign Kelly Mullen Martin to the position of principal to provide for leadership and administrative oversight to both the Blue Point School and the Pleasant Hill Schools. Kelly, too, has done an extraordinary job um, in partnership with Ann Lovejoy to keep all of our K-2 schools on track and advancing academically, and I applaud her efforts. So you have before you uh, two draft motions that I would request uh, the board to take action on this evening. Very good. Do we have a motion on our Moved, first? Uh, to support the uh, superintendent's recommendation to appoint Kelly Crosby to the position of principal of the Wentworth School. This appointment will take effect immediately and will extend through her first probationary year as principal that being July 1, 2015 through June 30th, 2016. Second. Very good. Any discussion? <clears throat> Comments? Anything? Anyone? No? I think it's very exciting. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, a, as a parent of a Wentworth student. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sad to say that my children aren't at Wentworth anymore, but did have the pleasure of having Mrs. Crosby. So Very good. Mrs. Yes, Crosby, Kristen? you've been like my favorite teacher ever since I had you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a nice endorsement. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations. Very good. All in favor of this motion? Seven. Very good. Thank you. Draft motion number two. 
Do I have a motion? I will move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to reappoint Ann Cass to a second subsequent temporary appointment as K-2 interim assistant principal for the term of July 1, 2015 through June 30th, 2016. Second. <coughs> Any discussion or comments? Yes. I have a student there too, so I might as well come. No, it's it's this year has been great. I feel like it's it's flowed nicely. There was no interruption, no disruption to the students. It's it's been a great experience, I think, for the kids as well as the parents. Very good. Any other comments? Questions? No, seeing none. All in favor? Seven. Congratulations to our principals and our Great. assistant principal. And, and uh, John Thurlow and Kelly, Kelly Malmutton as well. And uh, um, Ann's resume is also part of that packet. I, those are the two appointments from the board, so uh -huh. you have the resumes there. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for your hard work. Congratulations. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Eleven point zero. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Very good. All in favor? Seven plus two. We are adjourned. Thank you.